Hello, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different, something that I haven't actually done ever in my life. So that's going to be interesting. We're going to be using a pile of floppies here. Uh, the label here is not really indicative of what's on there. Uh, but we're going to be installing Windows 2.03 on the Compact Desk Pro XE466. Now, you might think, uh, well, Windows 2 on a 486, that's pretty much way overkill. And you'd be exactly right. But it's just something that I've never done before. So I bought a 256 megabyte SD card and uh, I just installed a OEM Dutch version of MS-DOS version 4.01. I also managed to check down an OEM version of Windows 203. And that's what we're gonna be installing today. Sorry about the little shaky camera there. I just have to reposition the tripod. So let's go to the A drive and see what we can find there. Just as a reminder for those of you who don't know this system, this is a Compact Desk Pro XE466, which is a 486DX2 based computer with, of course, a 486 at uh, 66 megahertz. We have 16 megabytes of RAM, a Sound Blaster 16 uh, sound card, onboard graphics, and a uh, 10 megabit uh, Ethernet card. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, yeah. So the thing is, we need to figure out what the install application is uh, called. I'm going to bet your eyes it's going to be install.exe or something like that. Let's see if we can get a wide view here. It doesn't actually seem to be uh, that obvious. We have a setup.inf, so, and a setup.exe. All right. Should have known. So let's take a look at Windows 2 setup. I've done this in a uh, well. I think it's been it's been many years since I've done this in a virtual machine. I've never done it on physical hardware. That's what makes this video a bit more interesting. Uh, let's see. So we need a couple of uh, things to know. We need to know what kind of graphics card we have. Well, we can't get that working for sure. That that, that much I know. Uh, we do have a mouse that we can get working. It's a serial Logitech mouse, so that should be fine. We don't have any printers, so we don't need to care about that. Let's just hit enter and continue with setup. We'll be installing in the Windows directory, as usual. Uh, a Tulip PC or AT machine. Well, we're just going to act like this PC was actually a Tulip OEM PC instead of a comeback. Uh, let's see here. We don't have any of these. Uh, so I'm going to assume we should be able to get away with CGA, I think. We're just going to try. If this doesn't work out, then you can definitely uh, start yelling at me. Uh, we have a IBM Cavalli US keyboard, yes, that is correct. We have a Logitech mouse. I'm not sure if it's going to detect it as a serial mouse. We may have to redo that. Uh, small fonts. Uh, terminal. MS DOS medium font uh, VGA, yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Uh, that sounds about right, I think. Again, I have no idea. This is software from like 1987 to 1989, and uh. I wasn't even born back then, I was born in 1994. But it is pretty interesting learning about all this stuff, so, you know, there's that. So I guess this is going to take a long time. Uh, I will skip ahead, I'll uh, go through the floppies, and once we are ready to do the first boot, I'll be right back. Well, something else popped up. We have to select our... Uh, localization files. 
And apparently we need disc 4 for that. Disc 2 is basically useless then because I just I put it in and immediately it came up with that screen there. Uh, disc 4. Let's give that a shot then. Let's see what else we get. Now we need to put in disc 5. Alright. Do that. I'm almost willing to bet that our graphics are going to look super garbled and completely useless and we have to like reinstall Windows or something. I have no idea whether Windows already has the setup application like they did in Windows 3, because I'm pretty familiar with Windows 3.x. But uh, I'm not sure if Windows 2 already had that, so you could just do it through DOS and then select a different driver for a video card. Uh, Info.txt, no, I really don't give a shit. Thank you. And apparently we could already start going into Windows right away. Well, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? I just need to remove all the disks and organize them neatly. And let's go for it. Win. Oh, wow. It actually said Tulip Computers. Nice. Uh, yeah, right. So the graphics weren't working. <laughs> Neither is the mouse. So I'll need to reconfigure that for some reason. Or somehow. But I don't see a setup application where we can do that. So, is there a menu where we can do that in Windows 2? It doesn't look like there is. So is this basically it when you don't have like VGA support, you just get black and white? Does anybody know? Because it's certainly new to me then. Um, so that means we can't really do anything here. We have some applications we can go to, such as the clock. Uh, kill that. We have a to-do. Apparently we can make a to-do list here in Notepad. Uh, that's not interesting at all. I really wonder if we can get at least color support going here. But maybe we can't. At least we can get out of Windows. Resolution also seems very much off. It doesn't really seem a resolution that this monitor particularly likes. I mean, this is a way too modern monitor anyway, so I guess that's all right. So what I wonder about is... No, there is no setup application. Okay. So I guess um, I'm going to have to just try a couple things and see if we can get the, uh, the mouse and at least color support working, because that would be neat. That way we can properly test it on this machine. Uh, I'm going to try a couple things and I'll be right back. Alright, <clears throat> I got the graphics sorted. So uh, we're going to take a look at the boot up now. I just had to set it to EGA rather than CGA. For some reason I uh, remember that wrong. But uh, yeah. Uh, my Logitech serial mouse didn't appear to work uh, with the system. I'm assuming there is some sort of an IRQ conflict and I just don't really feel like solving that right now. I remember uh, this machine having some issues with that particular mouse, so it's nothing new to me at least. So now we can tap 1 and okay, go to Windows and type 1. And see the glorious color palette and there we are so i just uh, put in a ps2 mouse instead and that seems to work just fine excellent all right we can give this a name all right we'll just call it that 
fine with that. So now we can actually open things and take a look at how they look. So uh, yeah, this is definitely something I need in my life. A full screen, very low resolution calendar. Let's see, what else do I need? Well, I have an appointment on Monday at around that time. There you go, get a job interview. It's a useless one because I already took a, another job, but uh, you know, this one has been planned for a long time. I just have to show up and uh, be nice. Um, let's see, we have the card file here. Of course, classic notepad. Notepad version 2.03, copyright 1987. We have 100% free memory. Well, yeah, this is designed to operate on systems like one megabyte of RAM or even 640K, and we have 16 megabytes. It is an insane amount for 1987, even unthinkable. So it's pretty nice. Uh, we have msdos.exe, I don't know what that does. We'll take a look at that shortly. All right, of course I have reversey. We don't have that nice Ferrari from the uh, Steve Ballmer uh, that almost came commercial. We all know uh, which one we mean. Uh, let's play Reversi. I don't know how to play Reversi, and I think that shows because I'm losing badly. I have literally no idea how this works. Right, so where can we go? We can go there, right, and there. All right, let's go there. We can only put it where the cross is. Well, yeah, I know, I know. Take it easy. All right, so that's reversey. Very nice. I really don't care. All right, so let's take this full screen so we can actually do some real typing. Mm, yeah, nice. So let's see. We're going to go with Times New Roman because it is absolutely the most beautiful thing ever. Uh, we're going to do bold. Uh, center it, please. This is the first page, yes. Uh, hello, right, that worked. It does center it nicely, I have to say. Uh, yeah, let's keep it, no, let's see. Do the lining on the side there. Uh, we're gonna make it not bold, not italic. All right, it appears to be working. Uh, we're not gonna save any changes because it is pretty much useless. There's that to-do list again, this time it's in color. So we should have uh, control at exe. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. That's of course our control panel. It's very rudimentary. We can set the COM port here. It remembered the time and date, so that's nice. So it is indeed about 7 p.m. on the 7th of December 2018. That is very nice indeed. Uh, let's see. Mouse acceleration, no, we don't need that. We have such a low resolution. Uh, what? Resolution is so low, in fact, that even it's it's even too low resolution for this in some cases. Um, right. So what, this is also control panel two point zero three. Yeah, good. Okay, let's do that. 
Yeah, now our background is ugly ass orange. Mm, good. That's what I've always wanted. Oh yeah. Wait, what? Does that mean we can't actually resize that? No. It's absolutely utterly refusing. Oh, right. I was thinking with my Windows 3 mind, that's like, that's way too modern, man. Yeah. So there's honestly not a whole lot we can do with this. I mean, Windows 2 is pretty limited. Uh, yeah, this is, this is probably honestly it. Yeah, right. Apparently there was PCL support already in, in printers as old as the 1980s. Huh, that's something I didn't know. So that's nice. And now we have paint without color controls because those are on the bottom and I don't actually think color was supported yet on uh, Windows 2 in uh, paint. Yeah. Very nice. Well, I guess that's actually pretty much all we can do in uh, Windows 2 for now. Uh, I guess I'd have to put in some more software. And make, and, yeah, you know, playing games is useless in Windows 2 because it's just a dumbass uh, executive. Uh, I mean, you, you could even get a shell for DOS 4 and just run that. And it would be a pretty similar thing. Uh, in fact, uh, let's just go out of Windows here. I'll prep the... Uh... Can I still install the shell on DOS? I don't actually think I... Yeah, well... It doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, but yeah, there's also a shell just for DOS. Windows at this point of t in time was actually more or less a shell for DOS. It didn't really offer all that much extra... Uh, you know, features over a DOS shell, because basically w what the MS-DOS executive is, is a shell for DOS that has a control panel so you can just, you know, get a different background color and you can get some full screen applications, but it, it's not really able to do any real multitasking as such. I mean, sure, you could run a program, minimize it, then start another program, that's something DOS obviously can't do, but... Um, it was still very, very rudimentary, even for the time. Uh, there were definitely some graphical user interfaces that could do a hell of a lot more than Windows could. Windows didn't take off until Windows 3 for a reason. And this is basically that reason. So I guess the next stop for this system is to go to Windows 3.0 to really see the real improvements. And uh, I guess that's why this system was originally shipped Windows 3.1 uh, when it was shipped in 1994. Um, because that was the real business operating system. It was pretty stable overall. It could do better multitasking than Windows 2 could. And uh, it obviously had some, some better support in general for a lot of peripherals and graphics and sound. But uh, this was definitely a little fun experiment on uh, Windows 2 on the Desk Pro XE466. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.